All right. Hey, everybody. John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. And welcome to another Tuesday live Q&A where I'm going to be answering your questions live here on. I've got uh, YouTube live right over here. Google Hangouts on air. I've got Periscope down here. Now, my Periscopians over here, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. I uh, got a new tripod and it is not working out i'm not very impressed with it right now so we have to um mess with it a little bit to get it to work but yeah hopefully i don't move too much and knock anything over because this this right here is not very stable so just bear with me there i'll try and fix it if we have a problem there uh youtube live over here you should be just fine so all right so this is a live q a that i do every tuesday um i'm a freelance web developer. I've been doing this for about 10 plus years. Um, run a YouTube channel, a website where I teach tutorials and so forth. So if you've never been on the show before, that's kind of who I am. And I get a lot of questions about different parts of web development, web design, whether it's technical stuff, it's career stuff, business stuff, and so forth. And so I try to jump on here once a week and answer those questions the best that I can. Now, if you have a live question, feel free to ask it, uh, and I will try to get that answered on the show. I also have some questions that I have, have been submitted beforehand via YouTube, Twitter, and so forth. So uh, if this is all over and you you think of a question that you didn't ask live, then feel free to jump on Twitter or YouTube and ask me that question, and I will try to get it on next week's live Q&A. Also, if you're on Periscope, this will be live on Periscope for... 24 hours, as you probably know, so you can check out the replay there. I will also post this up on YouTube uh, at youtube.com slash John Moore's video. It'll be up there permanently where you can access the replay as well. Also, I'll, throughout this, I'll probably mention links and different things like that. Um, you can always catch the show notes and all of the links at johnmorrisonline.com slash for this episode will be slash 007. So johnmorrisonline.com slash 007 for the show notes and that'll give you any of the links and so forth that i mentioned so you don't have to try and write those down or remember them i probably won't even say the urls i just recommend going over to the show notes there all right so with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and kick off with our first question so this one was submitted over on youtube by jack and d sheriffant hopefully i didn't butcher that too bad and the question is, this is in response to a YouTube video where I talked about specializing as a web developer. And it says, when you say specialization, does that mean you don't believe in the myth of the full stack web developer? And so my answer to that is, I mean, not necessarily. Um, I think it's more about how you apply that stack than it uh and then market it than it is about the languages you know so i do believe that through time you should try to learn your full stack and that stack can be different for everybody and every maybe organization that you work with or the clients if you're doing freelance work that you tend to work with that stack can always be different you should learn your stack i believe but uh, when I say specialization, it's more about how, hey, Real Maranza, thank you for, for joining again this week. Good to see you here. Um, when I say specialization, it's more about how you apply it and how you market yourself. So the example I use is I build membership sites. Now, as a part of building membership sites, I'm going to use the full stack. I'm going to use my stack PHP, my SQL. Uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I'm going to use that whole thing in most of the projects that I do. But I'm in my marketing, I'm never going to use the words full stack. Why? Because the people I'm marketing to have no clue what that mean, means. These are online business owners, online membership site owners who really don't know anything technical. So if you say full stack, or if I said full stack, it would mean nothing to them. So uh, again, when I talk about specialization, it's more about how you market yourself and how you apply your stack. But yes, you should learn uh, everything that you need to learn in order to be able to de deliver on the projects that you're engaging in. So learn your full stack. Now, 
there are caveats to this that I think are really important because some people don't want to be freelancers. Some people want to get hired at a tech company. And so it's different for a freelancer versus someone who wants to get hired at a tech company. If you want to get hired at a tech company and they are actively seeking someone, they put in their, their job requirements or their, their ads that they put out for the people they're looking for, that they want a full stack developer, then that those are words that I would use. And in general, I would say using the words full stack developer when you're trying to get hired at a company is probably going to be something that you want to do simply because if they're a tech company, they will likely have people involved in the hiring process who are developers themselves and understand what that means. And so uh, that's one of the crucial caveats. The other caveat is if you are doing freelance and you tend to get clients who are developers themselves who are outsourcing, then that's uh, another uh, place where you could use that term. Or if you know you're in, uh, if you're in a situation where you have a lot of clients or you have people looking for someone to hire a web developer to be their go-to web developer for everything that they need, then you might use the phrase full stack. Uh, developer, but you're probably going to have to explain what that means. And so all through all of this, the key thing to keep in mind is who is your audience? That's the most important thing. Who's the audience? If the audience understands um, what a full stack web developer means, then and, and is and is looking for that, then yeah, use it. But most of the time, they're not going to know what that means. Most clients aren't technical and aren't going to know what it means. So those using those words are going to be kind of pointless. Now, someone asked, what does full stack web developer mean? That means that, uh, <laughs> I mean, you could probably debate it with 100 different people what it means, but it basically means that you both know both front end and back end development. So if you're a web developer, then it means, you know, PHP, MySQL, and you all, which is back server side. And then you also know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so forth, which is the front end or the client side. So it, it's knowing both. And again, as I mentioned, that stack can be totally different. Those are just examples. There could be, you know, .NET or whatever on the back end and all sorts of different things on the front end. So it just means knowing that full stack of client and server side. All right. All right. And thanks for joining us. Is that Turl Esker? Appreciate you jumping on. All right, so hopefully that answers that question for you. Um, next question I got is how can, and this is in, again in response to a tutorial, and it says, how can I make the file insert all the checkbox values uh, selected in my form as an array into um, one column? Appreciate that. Uh, glad that was helpful for you. All right, um, so how can, essentially, how can I take checkboxes in a form and uh, process those in my PHP script and insert them into a database. So there's a couple things that you have to account for here. First off, when you're writing your HTML, you have to make sure that if you want all of, uh, if you have a list of say 10 checkboxes and every one that's clicked, you want to store that, then you, you have to set up your HTML in a very specific way. So you essentially have to, in the name value, you have to uh, give it a name and then use brackets like you would kind of for an array in, in PHP code um, and then put th what that specific checkbox is. So essentially you have the name, the, the group, and this is, this is going to sound really convoluted, but don't worry, I'm going to point you to a link here, okay? So you essentially have the group of checkbox that you need a name for, and then you have the individual actual checkbox that was selected that you need a name for. And you have great advice, which I get a lot of meetings. Get a lot of time to look. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate you jumping on and saying that. Um, so you need again a name for the group, and then a name for the individual element. And there's use array notation to do that now. And then in your script, you what that will do is that group, every one that's checked, you'll now get an array as. Uh, in your your post uh, element there, your post array. So 
what that allows you to then do is you get a, essentially you you know what what all check boxes were checked for that particular item and then you can process them accordingly now you could serialize them and put them into a column but oftentimes and it, it depends on what this application is and what this option is but a lot of times you're going to want to be able to perform searches on those values if they're serialized that can be difficult to impossible to do so what you then often do um, is you're going to create a separate relationships table and associate them with whatever object you happen to be creating with that form okay so all that sounds like um, it can be very difficult here's the thing I have a tutorial over at johnmorrisonline.com. If you go to the show notes after this is over, give me about an hour to, to kind of post everything. But johnmorrisonline.com slash 007, I have a tutorial that I'll link to on how to set up your HTML correctly in order to um, uh, be able to handle the those checkboxes as an array. I also have another tutorial available that talks about creating a relationships table and how you would do that in order to make the values that you store searchable. So those two things together then are going to get you what you need to be able to uh, insert all of those checkbox values into your form, okay? So, or into your database. So johnmorrisonline.com slash 007, you're going to want to check out those tutorials. All right, the last question I have here then is, um, again, based off a tutorial on YouTube, it says, I'm just wondering how to join together uh, a web page and PHP slash PDO. My idea is to get, uh, is to place a PDO form in a web page, but I just can't figure out how to do it. Could you please give me some pointers? So there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can actually put the PHP processing script right in the exact page where the form is and just have the form submit to itself and then process that and handle all of, uh, handle all of the processing and, the return messages and so forth that way that that works well mainly for smaller applications if you're just doing one form that's probably okay to do the other way that you can do this is you can actually send the form data to a separate processing script and then that processing script when it's done you know do a header redirect back to a thank you page or back to the form page with a message and so forth you can handle that a number of different ways that's probably the one way you're going to want to go if you have if it's part of a bigger application or you're going to have more than one form you're going to want a processing script that can handle all of the different form you know different forms that you might throw at it uh, and, and it'll do everything that you need to do and write it as a class so that it can it can do all of that so um, as far as pointers for that, again, I have a tutorial where I actually walk you step by step through this over on YouTube that you can get access to. Um, it's something, it's the, the title of it is How to Insert Form Data into a MySQL Database, something like that. Again, over on johnmorrisonline.com slash 007, I will link to all of the show notes for, for all this stuff uh, so that you can get all these links. Okay. So those are the three questions that I have for today. Again, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I wanted to make sure and jump on here and answer the questions that you have, the any live questions that you may have had. Um, as I mentioned before, if you have a live question, uh, as I'm wrapping up here, you feel free to ask and I'll uh, try to jump on and answer that. But as I mentioned before, this replay will be live on Periscope down here, uh, periscope.tv slash JP Morris, if you want to get access to that for 24 hours. I'm also, looks like we have a question. What do you think the difference between Java, web.asp, and PHP is? Well, truthfully, you know, I haven't done much with um, Java or ASP. I've, my whole career has been uh, with PHP. Now, my brother is a, uh, you know, did the official route and went and got his college degree um, and has done a little bit of Java and so forth. So I have talked to him a, a little bit about it. In terms of the languages, what from what I gather, again, I've never used Java, but um, Java is a little more strict from what I understand. So PHP is usually pretty per forgiving in terms of syntax and so forth. And that can be, as you asked about security, that can be you know, open you up maybe to uh, some security issues. So I'm guessing with JavaScript being a little more strict, maybe you don't have as many of those issues. Um, you know, in terms of the web, 
Uh, I would say that PHP is still uh, very heavily leads in terms of market share. So if you're concerned about being, uh, you know, availability of jobs, or if you're uh, free, you know, the number of freelance jobs that are out there and so forth, then PHP has a much much larger market share. That also means they are. Uh, there's a lot more developers out there who know PHP, so there's a lot more competition as well. So uh, Java maybe not it maybe it doesn't have as many jobs and so forth, um, but you know there's also probably not as much competition because there's not as many people who know it. So you know again, having never used Java myself, it's hard to say. Uh, ASP, I really I, I wouldn't be in a position to really answer your question on that one. I've just never really. Uh, done much with ASP or talked to anybody who's who's used it much. I don't think that it has much market share. Um, I know PHP is far and away for the web uh, has the most market share. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of information anyway. I noticed you said you're having connection issues. Hopefully you can catch the replay uh, afterwards on Periscope or like I said, youtube.com slash John Moore's video uh, and you can get the replay. It'll be up there permanently. All right. So like I said, uh, those uh, the replays will be available on Periscope and on YouTube. Um, if you have a question over the next week, you can hit me up on Twitter at JP Morris. Um, you can also uh, uh, head on over to youtube.com slash John Morris video and ask your question there as well. And I will try to answer that. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.